before we get started, make sure you like, rate, follow, give us five stars. Uh, it really helps us out a whole lot. Also, if you're on Spotify, there should be a question box underneath. Make sure you answer it, and I'm keen to see your answers. Let's get into it. Welcome, everyone, to the Sunday Run Podcast. We are straight into it today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for listening. Um, I really appreciate it. We have the, you know, same couple of people that show up every week, and uh, it means the world to me. It, it really does. I, I'm very thankful. If you are running today, um, this is going to be an episode, an interactive episode where I'm going to be with you every step of the way. Obviously, last week we had Sean Bell on who is doing incredible things, but it can be a little bit difficult to kind of chip in and, and you know, ask Sean to give people who are listening on a run a bit of a G up. It kind of kills the flow of the podcast. So I thought I'd just leave it for that episode. Uh, but this episode, we are, we're doing the running thing. So I assume you just started and that's great. Keep going, chin up. First K is always the hardest, and hopefully you can tick off a fair few kilometers in your run today. I've got um, some big runs up and coming, kind of locked in some dates, which is really exciting. I'm doing a marathon on the 6th of May, so in, I think it's like four, four weeks or so from the point of recording. And that's just gonna be like a marathon by myself, you know, not with a special event, but just like doing it kind of cause I can. The reason being is two weeks after that, I've got um, the Great Ocean Road running race and that's gonna be, that, so that's 44 Ks. That was originally gonna be my first marathon. But the issue with that is it's super hilly. So it's like 400 meters of elevation, super windy. It's just not great conditions. And I figured if I'm gonna have this fitness, I really wanna capitalize on it and see if I can figure out what kind of time I can actually run a marathon in. So two weeks before the Great Ocean Road Marathon on the 6th, I'm gonna be starting from Port Melbourne, probably in the morning, and running 21.2 Ks, I think it is one way, and turning around and coming back and trying to do that as fast as possible. So we'll see what happens there. And then two weeks after that, so I'll plan to taper off in my training a little bit, and then get ready to peak again for the uh, Great Ocean Road running race, which to be honest, I'm just looking to get through. I'm, I'm not looking to have any crazy times, but um, yeah, I'll be there alongside Brooks, my uh, shoe sponsor, and hopefully I get to meet a fair few of you guys there. There's some great events. I think it's like, there's a, a half marathon. I'm pretty sure there's like a 10, 14 K or so, um, a half marathon, full marathon and an ultra, which one day I would love to do, which is I think 66 Ks. The Sunday Run program has been sent out. So by the time this podcast is released, week two would have been sent out. Um, but instead of like last time where I just sent out the week, I'm going to keep the original week in the email as well. So like you can start from week one if, if that's what you need to do. Um, but yeah, this time around, like I probably haven't promoted it all that much just because I know like, you know, I've got a fair few people in the email database who are getting it sent to and like, I, I think we've got a great group already. I don't want to pump my socials full of promotions and like the people who need it will find it. You will seek it out and, and that's always going to be there. There's, uh, yeah, there's always going to be like a running program there. So I, I really appreciate the support and this time around it has a weights training aspect to it. So um, yeah, if, like it, it's, it's a ridiculous amount of information to be honest for, for free, which is great. <laughs> Um, but it's got a full training program uh, with weights. It's also got running. I've like scheduled it all for you so you know which days to go like run, which days to lift weights, which days to rest. Um, and it's got plenty of tips in there. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. I've got some travel coming up. Nothing crazy, just uh, national travel. On the 28th of April, I think it is, I'm going to Perth. So I'm um, going to see family, but I figured like I'm going to be there for a week. I'd love to do like a meetup or so, maybe on the 29th or the 30th, um, go for a run. I think I'm staying like somewhere in Cottesloe. So uh, I'll obviously promote that a fair bit on my socials. If you guys are in WA, you want to come for a run, we can have a meetup, grab a coffee or whatever. Uh, let me know. That'd be great because we'll do, we'll tick off like four, four to five Ks and um, yeah, I can get some content, uh, maybe even go for a swim after, but if you guys are in Perth and like you're listening from Perth, I really appreciate that and we can, um, we can link. After that, I'd love to lock in a trip to Tassie as well. 
a uh, bit more of a trail running emphasis, I think, and just like a bit more of hiking and, and walking and stuff. I might go with my old man and go check it out. A few of the huts there on Cradle Mountain. Um, so we can also do a meet up there if you guys, if we got any people repping the Sunday run stuff from, uh, from Tassie. And then after that is Sydney. Um, I think I'm going on the 19th for the Fashion Festival, but I would love to also incorporate some Sunday run stuff there. So if you guys are in Sydney, let's link up and we'll also do a run. Wild. Good stuff. That's a, that's a fun intro. Um, thank you for getting through all that. I'm still with you. If, you, if you're running, keep going. It's, uh, now is not the time to stop. You should be chipping through it a fair way. And um, I think your fitness, if you've done this podcast a fair bit, we're 10 episodes in now, it's 10 weeks, your fitness should be uh, ramping right up. So keep going, King. Big podcast today. I'm going to talk about where I'm at with my running in particular. I feel like I'm kind of losing love for it, not going to lie. So I'll talk you through that. Um, I had a really good chat with like my coach yesterday in regards to like what I am doing. I feel like I'm in a little bit of a rut. So keen to chat about that. And then um, I've got a really big mailbag. You guys sent out so many questions, which I'm going to get to. So yeah, like losing, losing love for running, to be honest. When you're, when you're a running influencer, that's a, <laughs> it's a bit of an issue. And it's, it's hard to put my finger on exactly why, but I think I figured it out. It's become so programmed for me. Like I, I started running with such like, like good intentions of, um, yeah, I started running at good intentions of being just like improving my mental health, like just going for a run and, and just like really enjoying it and just, you know, going through the process, having a high heart rate, running as fast or as slow as I want and feeling incredible after. Then obviously like, you make more content on it and it becomes like, all right, well, I want to reach a marathon now or I want to reach a half marathon or I want to reach, you know, a sub 20 minute 5k. So then you have to actually start programming it. And I think over time it's, it's just become too programmed. Like every run I do, there's such a huge focus on heart rate and pace that takes the joy out of it. Like I'll always get a comment, like you need to slow down, you need to do this, you need to do that. And like, it's just slowly kind of chipping away at my love for running. I've got a program which is like very dialed in. I know the exact kind of Ks I'm meant to do each week. I know the exact heart rate I'm meant to have, um, the exact pace and so on. And like, that is essential for running a marathon. And I'm not shying away from that. I need to keep doing that. But it's very obvious to me that like, it's kind of taking away my love for running. I think like, to do a marathon and to do it safely, you need to program it. And, and I have programmed this stuff, as you know. But I also think the importance of actually loving running needs to be emphasized. Like you need to, that's why we started. That's why we did it. That's why we, that's why I started making content on it. And if that's taken away, then like the content fails. And well, like firstly, the happiness is taken away from the running and then the content fails. So like, that's a pretty big issue, especially in my line of work. So kind of alarm bells ringing in regards to that for me, like I need to figure this out. And I chatted to my coach the other day um, and we had a talk about it and I'm going to start programming in a run once a week, which is no like it's just an enjoyment run. Like I'm not going to bring any technology with me. I'm not going to necessarily upload it on Instagram because I think that's like a lot of where the love is taken away. You know, for instance, if I put up like I ran 22 Ks at like a 150 heart rate, like 150 beats per minute heart rate, then like I'll get comments like, bro, you need to slow down. Like pretty condescending comments, like do this bra. Like, I don't know, I don't really like the way it's kind of delivered. And um, that's taking away the love. So if I go for a run and just like drop the technology leave my phone at home and just do the run for the sake of running, then I think that's going to really like re remind me why I love doing it. Another thing to that is like running with someone. So that's like, that's, I think there's been like studies on it or science on it. Like the, you get the most benefit from running by doing it with someone else or doing it in a group. So I've got a mate there that runs as well. I'll, I'll do it with him a little bit and um, yeah, just trying to change things up. So 
I don't know, like, yeah, obviously I'm giving out free programming and all of that, but I don't ever want you guys to fall out of love from it. Like, yeah, there's a difference between being unmotivated and not going for a run versus like just being like, oh, this just sucks because I have to do this and I have to do that. Uh, so yeah, just keep an eye on that. And if you find like the programming's becoming too regimented and like you're falling out of love of it, then either can the program or just like start feeding in, um, yeah, like, you know, free, free runs every now and then. I, um, I had a really good chat with my coach yesterday. His name's Josh. I, I've been with Josh for like three years now. And he, he just like, he's like the person I bounce everything off, especially in regards to training, any like programs I make, any, um, you know, like what else, or any advice or tips I give out. I always cross check with him and he's obviously qualified sports and exercise scientist. Um, but he's also just like a really good guy. He's young. Um, and we just like talk about everything. And obviously you guys know that I made the decision like a couple of months ago that I was going to stop footy, um, to like focus on the running stuff. And I'm in this really like weird kind of limbo period where I'm not actually like, I'm really missing footy running's not all it. And it would be so easy for me to just like duck straight back into footy. And it's like, I spoke to my coach about it and he's like, you need to go all in on one first before you can make any other decisions. So like, yes, there's a huge drive for me to go back to footy. I really want to like straight away. But at this stage, I can't, I need to go all in on running. So he asked me to write down like the question of what is, what does being all in look like for me? I think you can't have like one foot in each, in each square. You need to have two feet in one to like really get the most out of it. So, you know, yeah, pondering that, like, what does what does all in look like for me? I mean, I suppose it's like doing constant runs, like doing plenty of fun runs and all of that, but also like traveling with running and, and doing what I really set out to do from the start. I think I can get a little bit kind of complacent or I can get a little bit reliant on how content is performing. But in actual fact, like as a circle, if your content's not performing well it's often because of something else in your life like the content is the thing that comes last so if you create like everything before the content so like you know your sleep's right you're you're happy like you're fulfilled all of that then the right content will come you can't like manufacture that and i think it's really obvious to tell so like i'm on a big mission to find out what does being all in look like for me and I think part of that is finding something abstract separate from the industry. So recently I've been boxing and I've done two sessions. I'm genuinely so bad at it, but it's learning a new skill and it's kind of taking my mind off my extreme want to run around on a footy field and get hit. Like I, that's what I crave, not going to lie. But to go all in on the running thing, I need to like shift my focus a little bit. I've started boxing and that's been really fun. If you guys are a little bit older if you're over the age of 20 and you've just stopped learning new things i'd highly recommend you start learning new things put yourself in the deep end it sucks like it's scary going to the gym and just like rocking up and saying hi and then just getting into a class like but you can definitely do it and i would highly recommend it whether that's boxing cycling or it doesn't doesn't even have to be anything that's like fitness related so yeah anyway it's a little bit of dumping on you guys but um hopefully i can regain the love for running and I, I still do love running like don't get me wrong I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea I just like I've noticed it started to creep in and one of my most asked questions is in regards to motivation how do I stay motivated well I guess like it's being proactive when I could feel myself falling out of love for something like it's that same with the gym so, okay well why is this happening okay you're over programmed then let's pull it right back and get to the point where we enjoy it again so just do an arm day every day for a week or like just do things that you enjoy do bench press and arms for a little bit because that's what you enjoy and that's so fine that's better than doing nothing so i i'm not motivated all the time but i am disciplined and um i think if you feel yourself like really dragging to go out for a run then then reassess why you're doing it Good job. You guys are going really well. Um, if you're still running, keep running. Start to focus on heart rate or don't. <laughs> but I'd recommend, um, yeah, try, trying to bring your heart rate down a little bit. I went, did 22Ks um, the other day and I've found that I'm actually getting really good at being able to control and like manipulate my heart rate. So what I can do is like, oh, the heart rate's going up. 
really sit back into it, like breathe it out and the heart rate comes down pretty quickly. So maybe try that for this run. Like let's say you're sitting at your heart rate um, is at 160 or 170. Try slowing right down. Don't worry about what Strava is going to say and see if you can bring your heart rate down to like even, yeah, if you're at 160, sorry, if you're at 170, try and bring it down to 165 or even 160 and then try and build from there. You know, that's a, it's a really good skill to have and I think it'll help you in the long run. Got a brimming mailbag today, which is exciting. Um, you guys have pumped it full of questions and I'm going to get into it after I have this sip of coffee. Um, yeah, thanks so much for sending in questions. I, um, every time I put up a story for like podcast questions, it gets at least like 100 to 200 responses, which in my experience on social media, that is ridiculous. Like that is, that's, you guys are so engaged and I really appreciate it. So hopefully, um, yeah, you can retain that engagement as we keep going. This question here from Al Pashan. So sorry about the pronunciation. Killing it. Love the content. What was the best thing you did to achieve a sub 20 minute 5K? Great question. Best thing I did was um, like like interval training or like, like high intensity. Essentially just splitting up the 5K into 1K efforts and slowly bringing them together. So I do 1K, at, so five times one kilometer efforts at like a 340 um, pace maybe with 60 seconds in between each kilometer and then slowly bring those kilometers together. Next you can do like, you know, two, um, two 2Kers and then a 1Ker, change the timing around. You will like, you won't even need to do that many sp like splits because you'll have the fitness straight away. Uh, that was definitely the best thing. The other thing was like documenting it and keeping myself really accountable. That's obviously, it got a lot of list, um, views and stuff, that sub 20 minute 5K stuff. And that kept me super accountable. So when I didn't want to do it, I just, I got out and, and did it. How do you organize yourself for gym plus running over the week? That was from Gabriel Panana. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, how do I organize it? Like, I have such a set plan for the whole month. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, so following a program is the trick. There's no doubt about it. It is the absolute hack. It does take like the abstract, like the kind of fun vibe away from it though. So I'd recommend having like a few pillars to set that you can like rely on. You know, you're going to do this on this day, this on this day, this on this day. But within those programs or within those workouts, you can have a little bit of, you know, ability to change it. Um, but yeah, I, I have it all planned out before the week. I have four runs each week at the moment. I'll do one on Monday, which is a really long one, and then one on Tuesday, which is also like, oh, it's a little bit shorter. And then I'll have a rest on Wednesday, and then Thursday I'll do a short fast one, and Friday I'll do a track session, which is like split up, like interval running. So I really enjoy running back to back. I know some people don't, and your body might not be capable of that just yet, but that is the best way to get quick fitness, if you're wondering. I know a lot of people say run every second day, but trust me, if you want to build fitness really fast, then I would recommend doing back-to-back -back days. Would you consider a run event in each city um, so we can run with you? Love in the podcast, Amelia. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that's part of you know what I was mentioning before about being all in travel and meeting you guys has, is one of those things i haven't even done it in melbourne yet which is pretty poor by me but i'll be looking to um do a bit of a meet and greet soon yeah like very soon but yeah i want to do that in multiple different cities i want to travel around meet you guys and um yeah that should be good zoe says three lessons you've learned that have improved your podcasting hmm. that's a really good question so there's two things, like, well, there's two different kind of podcasting for me. Firstly, there's an interview style of podcast. And secondly, there's like these one-on-one, -on -one, or these like solo podcasts. From my experience, solo podcasts are super hard at the start. Like, it, it's hard to talk to yourself for so long. You feel like a bit of a nutcase and you get really scared of dead air or you get really scared of like silence on the mic. Uh, it's something I'm still like working on, but you need to embrace the silence. The silence is good. 
Um, so yeah, I'll give you three things I've learned. Firstly is the stopping, umming and ahhing. So when someone's talking, like if I'm interviewing someone, I try and just shut up. It, it's, it's natural for you to say, yeah, 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 to agree with them. But from an audio perspective, that is so hard to listen to. You know, let's say like I had Sean Bell on last week and he's explaining about his run around, around Australia and I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so painful for you guys. So that's like number one. That took me 50 episodes to figure out is to stop saying yeah and stop like agreeing. The, the best way to agree is to nod your head and obviously if you guys are listening you wouldn't see it but when we have a guest on i nod my head like a madman second one is like from an interview perspective showing genuine interest i think once you get past the the scary thing of having the camera and the microphone and like lights on you once you move past that you can start to actually sit there this is with the guest and listen to what they have to say and ask questions that are off the run sheet ask questions that don't have to do with like what you are lining up next so you know sean's talking about his run around australia well like actually asking really intricate details which you guys as listeners are probably thinking and you're hoping that i ask that so that's a big one like that comes with being relaxed but that one is what makes a good podcast and that's what kind of gets to the nitty-gritty and you know everyone talks about like joe rogan or even stephen bartlett from diary of a ceo they're so good at podcasting because they are so interested and a bad podcaster doesn't give a shit what the per- other person's saying and they're just worried about the the lights and, and the mic third one it's probably mm, like if you are starting a podcast it's the importance of reels it's the importance of the small clips they are what is gonna make people actually listen to your podcast you let's say you spend you know x amount on the production of the podcast you should spend be spending just as much on the creation of the reels of like the promotion behind the podcast so if you're thinking about starting a podcast that is uh super important and something you can't sleep on josh gallard says shoes slash watch chat i'm in the market for both and would love some input well shoes it depends what your um what kind of running you're doing but i just ran in the brooks ghost the other day they're like almost an everyday trainer honestly so good i did 22 k's in them and like first time i had ever ran in them and they pulled up like my feet were incredible no blisters whatsoever and yeah i felt unreal watch so i'm with garmin at the moment and garmin's elite like there's there's no doubt about it it is more of like a it's a bit more of a serious setup Um, but that's the only one I can really comment. I've got a Garmin X6 Sapphire, um, and it just completely does a trick. It's not as sexy as the Apple Watch, and I really want an Apple Watch Ultra, but I would recommend comparing the two and figuring out what you like. What draws me to the Apple Watch is that I can put, you can put a SIM card in it and you can leave your phone at home. So if I'm going on a really long run, obviously have it connected to earphones, like I can call people and have a chat um if like i see a text or whatever i don't need to have my phone on me whereas the garmin the current garmin that i have i can't do that so i'm strongly considering an apple watch um but that's probably just me looking to spend money which is silly so i've been listening to podcasts while i run recently which is very new for me i never understood how people did that and it's only from like my uh, long slow runs and I've got a question here for Colm Farrah, Farragher. It says, did the podcast come after a certain level of comfort running? Still can't. Assuming he means he still can't listen to podcasts while he runs. Yeah, so definitely came with fitness and it came with not trying to like spike my heart rate or not trying to find adrenaline for the run. When you're doing these slow, long runs, what you actually want, like I don't even have a coffee beforehand. You try and bring your heart rate down as much as possible you like just try and relax almost like meditate so someone talking to you in your ear is a lot more relaxing than like music so that's where the love came from also like you're out running for let's say two to three hours mate at least make something out of that time and learn something um so yeah and i've also found like i can consolidate information a whole lot better when i'm running like i think about things a lot deeper I, that might have something to do with the fact I've got ADHD, so I need to like be doing something to be consuming. But um, yeah, it really helped. 
What would you recommend for someone who feels too heavy when running? 160 centimeters and 79 kilograms. It's a good question. I think like feeling too heavy for running, like f fair enough. Impact is probably the first thing we look at and just, I'm not a physio, so maybe see a professional before asking me. But what I'd say is like, maybe look at impact. Like if you feel too heavy on your knees, on your ankles, so on, think about going for a run around an oval. Like do it on grass, somewhere where it's gonna absorb, um, yeah, absorb like that weight. The other thing is splitting up your runs. So a lot of people think like, oh, if I'm gonna run, I've gotta go straight out and do four kilometers. You definitely don't. Split it up. Why don't you do 30 seconds of uh, walking and a minute of jogging and just like do that 10, 15 times and slowly over time, like take out a few of the walking reps and obviously put them in for running. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say start slow and build up to it. The other thing is like, um, yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll stick with that. It's just like impact and I'd recommend going around an oval, try and find the enjoyment behind it because I promise once you get it, it's really good and your body will adapt to you going for a run. Molly says, what podcast do you recommend to listening to when running? Um, obviously, it's Horses for Courses, but I really like something quite insightful. I'll whack on a three-hour Joe Rogan podcast and listen to someone talk about space and the stars. Um, I also really like Stephen Bartlett, the Diary of a CEO. I find his when he gets a good guest on, his line of questioning is really great, and it it's like always sparking kind of questions in your brain. So I'd recommend something you can actually learn from. Maybe not like the more poppy podcasts, you know, like the, oh, I forgot, like the Shameless or whatever they're called. I'm, I'm not sure what they're called, but those kind of ones probably like not as insightful. Um, whereas something that's like someone talking about the body or like the world and, and so on, I find those to be a whole lot better when you're running. Andrew Huberman could be a good one to listen to when you're running because you actually need to be focused on what he's saying. So you can't really listen to that throughout the day. But if you're going for a run, your main focus is what's in your ears. So um, it's literally like a uni lecture and you can actually consolidate information. There's a good idea, actually. If anyone's at uni, you should record your uni lectures and listen to them on a run. I reckon that would help a lot. Um, do you... Much about your muscle makeup... Oh, do you know much about your muscle makeup? Brackets, fast twitch, etc. This is from Alexandra. No, I don't. But I just did an Ancestry.com um, DNA test. I just sent it off. And the main reason I did that is because I want to figure out like where I'm from. And that tells you like what likelihood of like, mu like muscle fibers you have, obviously like where you're from and so on. And like what your line of um, genetics kind of give to you. So... I would say I have fast twitch muscle fibers. It's like when I play sports, the one thing I can do is run fast. Um, so all this marathon running is um, probably not ideal for that. But anyway, I'm, I'll be able to get it back pretty quick. Another question, were you always athletic? Yes, to an extent. I was always really small though. So like I struggled quite, like struggled in school footy and stuff because I was the size of a finger and other blokes were hairy drinking beers and rooting while I was talking about patting my fucking bunny at home. Brooke Dalton says, biggest tip for starting a podcast. Oh, sorry, I kind of just did that, but great question. Um, yeah, g you just got to do it is my recommendation. Also, the thing, the other thing is like, what sets you apart, apart from the rest? There are so many people out there with the podcast these days, which is great and it provides us all a lot of content, but what is going to make people listen to your podcast over anyone else? I would highly recommend doing things like providing tips or providing free advice that always does well um alpha underscore finn says is this where you thought you would be at this time in your life um i mean i had no idea i was going to do this as a job to be honest but like i don't feel like i'm very far, far in life like i feel uh how do you say it? yeah i feel like i can do so much more and which which gets annoying like if you're always striving for more it kind of gets annoying like where do you find the, the happiness in it all but um definitely feel like i should be along uh, like a bit of a way along and i had no idea what i wanted to be when i grow up other than like play footy um when i was young so i mean i guess it's kind of where i thought i would be but at the same time i feel like i could be further along 
that's it for today, everyone. Um, that's all the questions. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been real. It's been good. Uh, should have a guest next week. Very excited. And thank you guys so much for supporting. Thanks so much for listening. And good luck if you're still running. Keep going. Sorry, this is a bit of a shorter one. I love you. Bye.